Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling, the Nike Hot Seat today. A very special guest, Executive Director of the NWCA, Mike Moore, joins us. Mike, how are you? Doing great, Scott. The big news out there, of course, the 2016 Championship Series. Some people are inserting the word bowl in there. We won't today, but this is about the National Duels, Mike. Reworked, retooled. Talk to us about this new next generation of the National Duels. Well, really, it's it's uh, as you had stated, the the national dual meet concept has been in place since about 1989, and it has sort of morphed over time. And it's you know obviously the needs and the circumstances of Division One wrestling have changed substantially over that time. So um, back at our convention last summer, we the um, you know a lot of our top Division One coaches got together, and they sort of had some some uh, guiding principles. You know, one of the guiding principles of one dual meet Mike, on the I'm weekend gonna, of I'm February. Gonna stop. I'm going to ask you to stop. What are some of the principles of this event? Okay, well, one of the principles is to minimize the amount of wrestling that takes place toward the end of the season. So for example, this bowl championship concept limits each team to just one dual meet, as opposed to what we've done in the past where you've had a bracketed event. Last year we had eight teams and, and it was on one weekend. A couple of years ago we had a round of regionals and then a championship. So it was on two weekends. So that's one that's one guiding principle. Another guiding principle is a structure that places the utmost importance on the outcome of regular season dual meets. And uh, we want to try to get to a point where every team in every conference um, is trying to do everything they can to win their conference dual meets to qualify to get into um, this championship series. Let's talk about the format. First date important, February 14th. Why? Well, February 14th is when all of the conference dual meets are completed. And that's when we will uh, be able to identify the team dual meet champion from the seven non-Big Ten conferences that are spread out across the country. So there's going to be eight bowls. There's going to be one Big Ten team that, that hosts each of the eight bowls. And then they're going to be paired with a non-Big Ten opponent. Um, and they'll be uh, paired according to their national ranking. So, for example, if the pairings was were done today, the number one ranked Big Ten team would be Penn State, and the number one ranked non-Big Ten team uh, would be North Carolina State. But what adds excitement to this is North Carolina State still has to get past Virginia Tech to win the ACC, and North Carolina State still has to get past Missouri. Um and, you know, convert, and even, conversely, doesn't Penn State need to get past Ohio State? Exactly. Penn State's got to get by Ohio State. And in the Southern Conference, uh, on Friday, University of Tennessee Chattanooga has to get by Appalachian State. And uh, potentially, if they lose to Appalachian State, there could be a three-way tie between Appalachian State, Gardner-Webb, and Tennessee Chattanooga. And that's precisely what the coaches intended um, to come out of this format to try to create, just like in the NFL, like Major League Baseball, where every week everybody's talking about the implications of the dual meets as it relates to who gets into this championship series. So making the dual meets that much more important. Correct. Non-Big Ten wild card team. There will be a wild card team. How will that team be chosen? Well, it would be the highest ranked, the, uh, the highest nationally ranked non-Big Ten team that did not win the dual meet championship of its conference. So right now, um, the teams are kind of in that bubble would be uh, Virginia Tech and University of Oklahoma, I think, are the two that would be sort of in that spot. But if Virginia Tech beats North Carolina State, um, it, it, it becomes another scramble <laughs> of <laughs> who could get in and who's not in. All right, so the locations. Let's discuss the locations for the uh, these uh, dual meets. Well, we have big the eight Big Ten host sites secured. Now, in an ideal world, you wouldn't want to determine them till the weekend of February 14th. But this is a brand new concept. 
Some of the Big Ten schools had scheduling conflicts. So even though they may have qualified to host, they were just unable to host this year. So we know the, the sites of the eight bowls, and they're going to be, this is not in any kind of order, but it would be Penn State, Rutgers, Michigan, Ohio State, Indiana, Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska. All, all solid and, and all very proven ticket-selling schools as well. Who Who's uh, responsible for selling tickets? Well, the host institutions, one of the benefits of having an event like this on, on, you know, on college campuses, particularly with the Big Ten schools, is there's an infrastructure already in place. They have a ticket office. They have a sports information department. They have an event management staff. One of the other benefits of doing this on Big Ten campuses is we can just um, navigate with one television network, which in this case would be the Big Ten network. They have agreed to webcast seven of the bowls and nationally televise whichever dual meet is determining the national dual meet champion. So the biggest numbers, of course, is what they're interested in, and rightfully so. That's what makes for great television. We're talking with Mike Moyer of the NWCA. The topic today, the NWCA Division One National Duels, the 2016 Championship Series. The event will take place Sunday. And, and I'm, have I got the, the date right here, Mike? February 21st? Right. It's actually the, 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 the more accurate way would be saying it's the weekend of February 20th. Again, we've had some scheduling conflicts. So like University of Iowa can only have their duel on Monday night. So that would be uh, February 22nd. Uh, the majority of these duels will be on Sunday, February 21st. And uh, Minnesota is trying to work through a scheduling glitch. Um, they may have to go a little bit earlier than that weekend. Fantastic idea, and I know the coaches, uh, for the most part, uh, are behind this. And I've noticed that Penn State, uh, who's been uh, uh, problematic in their absence, if only for their absence, uh, is behind this as well. Where's Oklahoma State? Where's uh, Where's the Big Twelve as a as a conference? Well, Oklahoma State, as of now, uh, would be the. I believe they've locked up the Big Twelve team championship, so they would be the number one team. And uh, coming out of the Big 12. And then right now, University of Oklahoma would be the 16th, the wild card team. Now, they're not necessarily would be ranked 16, uh, but, you know, they would be the wild card team as of today that gets in. But there's still a lot of wrestling to be done this weekend coming up and next weekend that could could uh, change that also. I, I'd like to also say, Scott, that as you can imagine, with a first year event like this, you know, there's just there's unanticipated challenges that come up. And I really wanted to extend the heartfelt thanks to the participating coaches and to the administrators across the country that have been extraordinarily flexible in helping us work through some of these challenges. You know, the first time through, it's never going to be perfect. What we're trying to do is to see if we can just get develop a pilot, a concept, iron out the wrinkles and, and, and something that can we can build on each subsequent year. Mike, and that's perhaps uh, how we affect change is doing it together, coming together with some commonality, uh, getting behind, behind getting behind the ideals, uh, setting goals and objectives, and I think the goals and objectives here are attainable through this format. Uh, really like it. Uh, surely uh, the proof will be in the pudding on the weekend of the 20th of February. Mike, it's always good to talk to you. Let's... Uh, Make sure the fans know where they can get more information. It'll be nwcaonline.com. We, of course, at takedownwrestle.com, will be forwarding all these ideas and the stories along the way and uh, featuring it on our television shows in uh, in our fashion as well. Mike, uh, a final, uh, final plea from you. Let's get tickets sold. What do you think? Uh, no, exactly right. And uh, again, they'll be able to get the uh, fans can get all the information they need from our website or they can also go directly to the Big Ten schools. There'll be all the information they need uh, there as well. But Scott, we really appreciate all that you're doing to help us promote this. And and again, we, we need to sell as many tickets as possible. And we we, we really want to have a great event and one, you know, one that we can really build on in subsequent years. Mike Moyer's been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. We thank him for his time and his staff with the NWCA. The national duels are coming up. We need you to be a part of it. You're going to want to be a part of it. These are your teams. This is your sport. Who will win the 2016 championship series? Well, that, my friends, is not in doubt. There will be a winner. But who? 
I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. We appreciate you watching.